so it's time to talk League of Ireland football. The new season getting up and running this coming Friday and Saturday night. Uh, Derry City, of course, at home on Friday against Drogheda in the top flight and in the first division. Longford Town are taking on Finn Harps. Uh, the, match, the match is at Bishop Gate on Saturday evening. And uh, I'm going to talk to two gentlemen now who know a thing or two about the League of Ireland first uh, football. Uh, first of all, joining me in studio is our special guest, former Harps captain Keith Cowan. Keith, you're, you're welcome to the studio of Highland. Oh, awesome, thanks for having me in, yeah. Yeah, it's good to see you. And uh, also via link on Zoom, we've got Declan Boyle, another former Funner Harps captain. Declan, good to see you. Good to see you, lads. Good to be back. Yeah, it's good to be back talking football once again. But uh, Keith's been still kicking a ball. He's knocking about with Derek at the minute. How's things going there, Keith? Oh, I didn't know you were going to start there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the back foot straight away. Yeah. Uh, look, it's it's um, it's been difficult season. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Um, there's been a few changes of management, uh, maybe down to performances and that. Um, look, it's a it's a it's a young it's a young ex- an experienced side maybe, and you know some lads uh, looking to forge careers. And you know it's a very competitive division. You know. Um, uh, we've been picking up results here and there, but just lack of consistency, I suppose. Uh, you know, within the with, within the squad, and you know, January wasn't too kind us in terms of a few lads moving on. So um, uh, Emmett, you know, he's had to try and plug some gaps and bring in some so, some players, and ultimately, I suppose where you are, the pool of players you're going to get in isn't too uh, isn't too experienced. Um, the quality differs, but look, you know, you've lads, as I say, that are look, tr- trying hard and. Uh, Hopefully things will pick up over the next few weeks. Yes. Well, listen, Declan, what are you at at the moment? Obviously involved with, with Sligo Rovers, doing a bit of training, getting the, the group together again? Yeah, absolutely. Now, as you know, this, this was on the 19s last year. This year has been moved up to on the 20s. The FBI have been a strategic move and moved it up to 20s. Probably we will see in the future as well that the 17s will probably go up to 18s and 15s will probably go to 16s. That's probably what will happen over the next year or two. Yeah, currently I'm um, still with Slag Rovers under 20 teams. We're back training since the first week of January. We're actually playing for Harps on Saturday, so a pre-season friendly before our season kicks off um, on Saturday week. Uh, we're going to focus. So I'm looking forward to the new season. Um, a lot of work to be done, but yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Harps obviously played the senior side, played Slago last weekend, and uh, it was good preparation from a fun Harps point of view, one in the game. Yeah, great result for them, you know. Um, I suppose when you look through the squad and, and Darren Murphy's obviously come in and what he has added is he had added a little bit of experience to the team as well, you know, and players that have been around the league as well. So with with also players that have a lot of energy and, and their youth on their side as well. So there's a good mix there. So they had a big result obviously against like the Rovers, especially coming from one another as well. So that was really encouraging for for Finn Harps and the players. And I'm looking forward to see how the season pans out. Obviously, last year was very disappointing. That's in the past. And we're obviously looking out to hopefully this year maybe push into the playoff spot and, and even above higher. Let's, let's see how it goes. But yeah, it's been encouraging pre season so far for, for Harps. Has it been a pre season, Keith, for Harps that have them now in a better position going into this year than probably where, where they were at the end of last year? Definitely it does. Um, when you think about the, I suppose, the what they had to do last year and build an entirely new squad. I think maybe they kept one player, Ryan Rennie, from before. And, you know, you look through the team there, or the squad that they've been able to keep. I think they've kept 16 of the squad from last season, which is great. Um, you know, you've got a lot of experience in there. You know, uh, you got a few players back in. Uh, Connor Tourist that was there before. Uh, they signed David Colley from Sligo. I'm sure the deck he knows. And, you know, I, I know th- from playing in the league for a few years. And then obviously, you know, the, the lads that have been there before, the likes of Tim Heimer, the keeper, who had been out for a lot of the season with injury, who had played through injury from the start of the season. Tony McNamee, you know, there's, you know, uh, Ryan Flood, who hit the ground running last season and was probably one of the main, uh, you know, shining shining lights, which came from last, uh, or one of the main positives that, that came out of last season. So you have a lot of quality in there. As I say you've retained a squad that's, you know, that's played together, that knows each other, that knows the management. And uh, they'll be looking forward to get started on on Saturday, and you know, I'd be slightly optimistic, I, I suppose. Um, you know, going into the season with with that squad that's there, and you know, we've seen the results in pre-season, and you know, uh, they seem to be you know winning games and you know getting good results against against quality opposition. So yeah, there's obviously a few you know 
less uh, less testing games in there, but that's all to build confidence and, and to build fitness and to give people game time. So yeah, I think it looks positive. Yeah, uh, Declan, there was a, obviously a bit of optimism around Van Harps uh, last year, but there was a lot of the unknown as well when when we had the likes um, of David Ro- Dave Rogers in charge. Keith knows a thing or two about being under his manage- management ship, but it, there was optimism. But as what I said, there was unknown. But there's more known now about this group of players going to go into the squad. So is there a bit more? Maybe uh, solidness around the optimism that, that is there around Fun Park, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I think so. I think you know, Keith just mentioned there, it's always very difficult. Um, somebody coming in new, um, and then you've, you've no base of players uh, that are signed, you know, so you're just a, in that unknown territory. And also the manager, we weren't sure exactly what we're going to get out of, of Rogers last year. And probably the players he signed probably um, weren't of the quality they are this year. Um, and also, some of the players were saying didn't have the experience of working in that league or playing in that league, you know. So I think this year, as I said earlier, I think there's a good mix of experienced players um, and youth and energy and it's good pace as well. So I, I think that all should be as well for, for Darren Murphy and the squad of players. Obviously, Kevin McEwen in the background as well knows the league very, very well. So having that year behind your belt as well for Darren Murphy, because he would have played always in the Irish League. So... He knows the grounds, he knows where he's going. And that makes a big difference. That's just a wee bit of experience. Um, we know last year that there have been up and down. The form was, was good games and the bad games, and more bad than good. Very, very poor away from home. We've seen a lot of goals. So it's encouraging to see in pre-season, having to see the too many goals. They're keeping it quite tight. And if you are to be successful, you have to build from the defence. You have to make sure um, your defence doesn't lead too many goals. And, and also... Um, you know, you've got to be fit to spring forward and cause problems. And they have that in, in the last year, you know. Um, obviously, the quality players that they have, Sean O'Donnell, Aaron McLaughlin coming in there. And they signed your man from Bose as well, Chris Lowell, uh, Tiffy, as I think it's called. So we played against him the last couple of years, you know. And, and um, he's really, really quick and very direct. Um, and Finn Park will suit him, big pitch in Finn Park. So it'll be interesting to see how he pans out. Obviously, young and learning his trade, but he's got loads of energy, loads of pace. So, so Darren's going to win for that experience with energy and pace. Um, so it should be a good combination. Um, David Colley coming in is an excellent signing for me, really, really good. Um, I was surprised that um, Slag will let him go. A really good professional, um, good around the place, works really, really hard. So he'll be at it. And there, along with Tom, Tony McNamee as well, and Connor Turish coming back as well, will help the defenders, you know. So that, it's a really good mix. I'm looking forward to it, you know. I suppose it's important that. They probably hit the ground running, get off to a good start, and I know it's difficult the first match away in, in the league, but um, that, that's a good good match away. Longford, well, they're well. Um, I suppose they could go there and get three points, no problem. You know, they play up to the, up to the form that they should play and how they've done in pre-season. But it's important that their home form this year is really, really good, and, and that gets the, the fans up, gets the fans coming out and watching them, gets a wee bit of energy around the place. So, um, looking forward to the season. I said earlier, I think there's a really good squad of players to put together now. It's about them coming out and performing um, over the league. Yeah. Longford's the opposition. There's a few changes down in Longford as well. Uh, so there is, Decky, but if you're on the road and would you be happy enough with a point to start things off? I think so. I mean, yeah, obviously, you always go out to win the game and get three points, and it depends how the games go. Some games, you, you're lucky to get out with only one point, and then some games, you get a draw, and you should have got three. So it's really just depending on how they play and how they perform. It's always definitely the way in the first match. Every team starts off at the very start and they're full of energy because it's the first match and you know there's a lot of eagerness and people want to impress um so yeah and that big crowd as well normally um down in longford as well for the first match so it's a really good occasion you know but yeah they're absolutely well capable going out there and, and put on a big performance and getting three points but you know obviously if they get a draw or two it's still a good start um but um yeah listen either way that they'll go there positive they've a good uh, pre-season behind them good form good results um, especially in that last field against Slagger Rovers was an excellent result. Um, Slagger played a strong team out as well. So, um, yeah, and they played Derry a couple of times too. And they haven't been, uh, you know, they've dealt well with Derry considering the squad of players that they have as well. I know, I know they drew and lost as well. So, but still the form has been good. Um, and they should take that into the first match. And, and you're expecting a big performance and, and maybe get three points. Um, obviously, you've been to Longford on a, on a couple of occasions, uh, so you have Keith. Uh, you play there last year? Yeah, I was down. Yeah. yeah, I was down last year. Um, it's actually we got two good results there yeah. last year. We uh, we won both times. Um, uh, Stephen Henderson and, and uh, Gavin Pierce down there at the helm, and I think it was more the end of the season last year where they started to really kind of kick on and you know sort of find their feet. I think the the second transfer window. 
help them a lot. But yeah, I suppose the, with the guys going down there and you know being successful there last year, it's not a bad one to open with. Look, it's always it's always good to get um, it's always good to get a point on the board early. You know, yeah. you don't want to you don't want that to go on. And but uh, I think the lads will be positive going down there and maybe thinking that uh, three points will be definitely achievable. Yeah. Well, then the game after that then is obviously the Cork City game. Yes. And I think Cork are right now favourites. We've seen what Galway done last year. Is Cork going to be the Galway this year? Um, possibly. I, I'm, it's you know when you when you look through the first division, you you look through the teams that are there. Um, yeah, yes, you have you have Cork coming down, you have UCD coming down. Look, Cove, uh, Wexford, you know those ones that were in the playoff last year, they'll be looking to kick on. Um, I, I kind of felt that it's between Galway and Waterford last year, you know they you know they almost blew teams away, you know with the quality that they had, the organisation that they had. You know, don't like to talk too much about budgets that comes into it, but it does. And you know the amount of money they had at their disposal, they were able to get the better players in. You know, Ronan Coughlin that was at uh, Waterford, you know, amassing 33 goals, which is kind of unheard of. You know, uh, and obviously he's got his move off, 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 off the back of that. Galway that were so so difficult to break down in that. So Cork City coming down and blowing everyone away. Uh, I'm not so sure. Ronan uh, Ronan Keaton, Rory Keaton, yeah. uh, his cousin. You were a boys one fan. <laughs> you were a boys one exactly fan. Exactly his cousin, so it wasn't too far away. <laughs> yeah, Rory Keaton's moved on. Uh, he's gone to St. Pat's. So, yeah. you know, you've lost a lot of firepower there. Um, a couple other lads have moved on as well, so uh, look, you're expecting yeah that them to be up there, but uh, it's you know looking looking through the look, look looking through the, the league, you know there's a lot of tough games, there's there's a lot of travel, it's difficult to you know it'll always take a few games to you know for everyone to have a look at each other and for the league to settle down in that, but um, yeah, it's, to be a betting man uh, to pick a winner or even a second too far, and it's going to be difficult. Yeah, okay, uh, Declan, playoffs the target for Harps. I think so. Um, that's what you'd be targeting. So obviously, at the start of the season, we'd play off squad and stay in that area and, and fighting to get obviously promoted. Um, but I mean, obviously, if you get into those positions and come July, if you're in a good position and you're going well, you might add a bit more experience and quality to the squad and you can maybe push on and try to get to that you know, second uh, or even push on to the first place. Um, that's going to be probably a difficult ask. I think Cork will probably dominate uh, this year. Um, yeah, they, they probably like to be a bit of power um, up front, but there's still going to be this team coming down, you know, um, and have a big, big budget as well, and big uh, home crowd, Turner's Cross can, can actually help things. So I expect them to be up there. UCD came down as well, um, lost a lot of players. Um, so they're going to be very young this year. They've recruited a lot of players. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Um, obviously, new manager in place, Danny Gallman. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. So, um, yeah. There. Yeah, William Connors down there, and uh, so uh, you know, good lad. Um, good to see him getting the opportunity. Obviously, done his time already um, with the Premier League and as a first team coach. So, so it's an opportunity for him. And, but you know, they always have good players coming through through the scholarship program. So the quality probably lack a wee bit of experience, um, but it might take them a wee, a wee bit of time to settle in. So it'll be interesting to see how they pan out. Um, Cove Ramblers as well. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one. They've done really well last year. So there's a lot of teams there. That can push in, and then obviously you Bray looking to push into that area, and you Wexford as well, and you hopefully Harps will be up there pushing into the playoff spots. A long way to go, um, but it's just getting that consistency, getting off to a good start, and um, building up a bit of confidence in, in the players, uh, and hopefully then making sure that Fen Park is a fortress, and you're getting victories where teams don't come and get easy points and, and go down the road again. So that's really important as well. So, but I think with the quality of players they've signed, the experienced players. Um, It'll be difficult for teams to come to Fin Park and, and get um, three points and go down the road. So, yeah, it's, a, it's not really interesting one. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen here, and that's what's a great thing about the pre season and the new season. You don't know exactly, and there's anticipation and there's eagerness, and you're so wanting to do well as well. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to how the season starts, how they start the season, and then how it pans out. But I, yeah. I still think they're, they're, we're going to be a lot better this year than we were last year for sure. Is Fin Park, Keith? Um, and getting those results going to be good enough to, to make it into that top five and, and get a playoff space? I think so. I think, um, look, it'll have to change from last yeah. year. I think five home wins last year was, you know, it's pretty poor. I think they had more away wins than they had home wins last year. I think they had six away wins with a couple of draws, maybe seven draws in there as well at home. So, look, uh, it all uh, the, the, the philosophy, the way that, you know, Murph's going to set the guys up... Um, how different is that going to be from the philosophy that was there last year at the start of the season when you were involved in it? 
Well, I don't think Murph's going to let his ego dictate yeah. how they play. You mm-hmm. know, he'll want he'll want to be hard to beat. You know, Fen Park's always been a horrible place to go. Um, you know, speaking to players that I've played with after my time at Harps, and you know, they all hate going there because, you know, it's difficult. The pitch can dictate along, especially at the start of the season and then come the end of the season, um, just due to the weather and that. Um, but like, uh, they always hate coming there because we were hard to beat. We were defensively kind of sound. Uh, but then when you go kind of man for man all over the pitch and sort of leave you know leave yourself you know two you know two two centre halves v two strikers or whatever it is yeah. or three v two or three v three at the back then look you're gonna you're gonna you're taking a big chance so I think uh, I think Murph will have them well set up you look at the, the the players that they have there you know playing at the back you know Jimmy Watson right back will probably you know start there on uh, Saturday night away look at Connor Tourish probably Matty Mackinson maybe. You have a couple of left backs to pick from there, but they have all played a lot of games um, in, in the league last season. Uh, so, look, I think that's going to be their home form. I think when, you know, the crowds, the, I suppose the crowds never really dropped away last year, even though the form wasn't great. You know, yeah. it seemed like a popular destination for people to go on a Friday night. Look, the way the players have interacted with the fans last year, I, you know, I've seen a big change there. And, you know, a, a lot of kids go into the games and, you know, they definitely, the players have definitely given their time, to, you know, to go over and make the fans welcome and that, and that makes a huge difference. But in terms of the football side of it, yeah, look, it has to be a hard place to go. Yeah. Um, I think I think it will be. I think they'll be set up there. I think the pace that they have in wide areas as well, you know, Deggy touched on it there as well with Aaron McLaughlin, Sean O'Donnell, you know, the new guy's success uh, that they got from Treaty as well. I actually saw him earlier in the, in the gym and he's a big boy and, you know, he caused a lot of problems up there as well. So, they um, and uh, I think uh, D- Dixie Ferry got a couple of goals the weekend. So, you know, he's yeah. he's going to be confident going into the season. So, look, it's all bodes well. But yeah, look, home home form is the key. It's a platform that you you know that that, that you set up on, and uh, you know that's going to have to be key if if if, if Harps are going to make a, a you know a stab at the playoffs and you know hopefully even further. Yeah, uh, take it back to you. Uh, we're talking about making Fun Harps a fortress. There's been a, a bit of talk this week about the new stadium. Once again, Aidan Campbell, the commercial officer, uh, coming out and saying that they are now at a crossroads with the stadium. Uh, basically, the government there's funding there, but Harps have to raise a certain amount of money. There's going to be a new fundraising drive uh, re- released this week. But it seems to be that we're we're talking again. It's it's the same old story with the stadium, but they're now at a stage where it's coming to to a crunch period. So it is, Declan. Are we going to see this happen? Do you feel over the over the next couple of years? Yeah, listen. I suppose we we've been listening to the, this new drive every year where the stadium's um, going ahead and you get some sort of promotional just before the, the season starts about the new stadium. We all know that it's badly wanted. Um, we know the fun part. Um, there's a lot of memories and a lot of history, but in this day and age, the facility is not fit for use um, for me, um, for anybody going to the match, um, anybody taking their family or kids or their wives or their daughters to the game, which is not fit for purpose. Um, and, you know, we need a new fun park, you know, so and whatever needs to be done needs to be done. Um, obviously, the money is there. The sports capital funding uh, is there sitting with the Department of Sport, um, and it just needs to be, I suppose, um, waiting for the, the BIK and benefiting kind in regards to money from to match fund um, the facility, um, and that obviously is going to be done now through a charity, or through sorry raising up through the club, um, and um, getting that money from the public to to support the application and, and finish off what they need to do. So I don't know, is it four million they have sitting there with the department, and they obviously have to match that fund maybe with another million or million, so. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of money. Like it's a lot of money to, to try to raise um, over, uh, you know, a span of a year or two. And you don't want this going into three, four, five more years because we've been listening about Fun Park, Fun Park, and the, the youth uh, stadium. And it's a long time since the the foundations and the half uh, the, the the concrete went in for a new stand over in Stranorlar, and it's just sitting there waiting. And uh, it just, I suppose, it loses its edge when you keep on asking about the stadium and the stadium and nothing happening, and people just lose that. I suppose the Walter level, even in regards to this stadium, will ever be built, you know, and that's the fear, you know, and people deserve a new stadium. Um, the sport, sporting community, Van Harp supporters deserve it, and um, you know the players deserve to play in, in a good stadium as well, Anthony Gall, and, and and hopefully, you know, hopefully this is the last time where there's a massive big call, and hopefully the, the community can come and support it, 
um, and raise the necessary funding to get this project up and running and, and get it off the ground. And hopefully have a new fun park in over in St. Arthur in the very, very near future, because we know that soccer needs it badly in Donegal. Keith, you were at Fun Harps and you were hoping that you would be playing in a new stadium when, when, it, when, it, was, when it was all announced, but it didn't materialise. Aidan's saying this week that the future of senior football is a, is a threat here if this doesn't go ahead. Is that something that you would agree with? Um, that if, if it doesn't happen, that there's going to be, I suppose, threats looming over Fun, Fun Harps that the existence at senior level may not be there anymore? Is it seen as that key? I think at the stage, it seems like a bit of an eye-rolling topic that, you know, at the start of every season, they're sort of, you know, trying to sell sell the club on the back of, you know, getting the new stadium. Uh, we've, as Dickie said, we've been hearing about it for for years now. And, you know, there's always some some sticking point or, you know, something hasn't gone through. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult sell to try and get players in when, you know, when you're sort of selling Fun Park as your, as your home ground and you, you, know, you see that the other grounds that are in the area, you know, obviously the Brandywell and, you know, and uh, the show grounds and things like that. Um, yeah, I think, I think, look, <laughs> Sticky said as well, you know, you, you want to go and watch your football in a, in a comfortable environment and, and Fun Park isn't that. Uh, will it, will football in the northwest and Battle of Fay and League of Ireland for, will, will the club hinge on not getting this um, I, I don't know if it's as drastic as that um, look there's always the interest there and, and Harp's not there but you know it's going to be more difficult and more difficult to attract people to attract players to attract families to come to the to come to the games if if that's what you're serving up and uh, yeah if, I suppose maybe with that time will tell yeah and more difficult to get promotion and what? get out of there yeah. if, if the players aren't coming to you yeah, I think it's, you know, the problem they have as well is sometimes, you know, we, we lose the whole momentum of it, you know, um, people are not sure exactly what's happening, you know, and that channel of communication channel needs to be put out to the community exactly where we are, what stage we're at, how much we actually need to go and finish this project or get it off the ground, you know, because you keep asking these questions and sometimes there's a lack of information going out in, in the general public and, and that's very frustrating for players, for supporters, you know, and I know that the committee are working extremely hard. Um, but sometimes that line of communication, to be honest with people and say, look, this is exactly what we need to do. This is what, how much money we need. And when we get this, we can go and build our stadium. And that's, so you're laying, you're laying exactly your cards on the table and say, right, okay. And then you'll actually get support from the people that, um, that want to go and, and build a new stadium and want to be there, you know, because sometimes that information, it's, it's very drippy. It comes out and drips all the time. You don't know exactly who's saying it, what's been clarified, what's not. And that, that's that's a problem, I think, you know, that communication with the people. People just want to know exactly, okay, where are we? What do we have to do? And now let's go and do it. And, and that's what needs to be done. And um, hopefully, hopefully that will be the start of it. And we can get a new stadium um, for the people of Donegal um, and for the maps. Um, I think you're right. As Keith said there, I don't think, I still believe that there's no stadium in three or four years that Fun Park will still be in existence. But we all deserve to be playing or to be watching games in a good stadium and comfortable environment um, for for adults and for families and for kids. Um, that's really important. Yeah. Uh, listen, we'll move on. Uh, we'll be talking about the stadium, I'm sure, uh, another day. So uh, I think the general consensus is in the first division, as, as we leave it, that uh, uh, Harps will be targeting targeting a playoff spot, and it looks like Cork City are the side that are, that's 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 going to be beat. But uh, a one, um, Keith. What I doubt would be a great start at the weekend. It definitely would, yeah. And look, you, when you follow that with two home games, obviously yeah. you, you mentioned Cork coming in and then Athlone as well. So you know, early points on the board would be a great start. And yeah, with Cork, and if they're going to be, you know, the ones to catch coming to coming to Balbo Fay, you know, a, an early point or three will be a great start. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go to the Premier Division. Derry City taking on Drogheda United, Keith's former club. Uh, Drogheda coming to the Brandywell. Um, Derry. Didn't get up the trophy or didn't lift the trophy that they wanted last year, Keith. Um, how big a year is this for the Candy Stripes and their hopes and their journey and trying to become league champions? I think it's a really big year. You know, yeah. I think uh, if things don't start well, then, you know, Rory could find himself under a bit of pressure. You know, when you think, when we talk about the money spent in there, the quality of players that they have, you know, they've made a real kind of statement purchase by going and getting, uh, you know, one of the league's top, top marksmen, Pat Hoobin, you know, for the last couple of seasons has been up there in the scoring charts. I suppose uh, if you look at uh, the the scoring charts from last year, I think he was 30s, but the other two lads that finished ahead of him have, you know, moved on across the water. 
uh, at 33, can he still offer what he what he used to? Um, you know that surface that up there in Brownie Wells, you know, fairly unforgiving if you're training on there, every, you know, every day of the week and and playing on it. But look, he's been used to that uh, coming from Dundalk. Um, Daniel Kelly's also a good signing for them that, that they got from Dundalk. So, yeah, look, uh, th- they have a great squad. You know the quality's there. Um, you know Conley coming at the back. You know uh, a local lad, Sam Todd as well. We'll get a first season under his belt. So look, they have real quality within the squad, and uh, I'd be expecting them to be top two anyway. Definitely, Shamrock Rovers. Uh, we're looking at last season that they were you know were able to you know kind of push on and you know win it quite easily, and they end up. Uh, but uh, yeah, look, this is a really big season for Derry. Yeah, huge season for Derry. Listen, Declan, uh, a guy that you know well. Paul Higgerty has decided to step into to, to the brandy well. He knows Northwest football very good. What did you think when you when you first seen that Paul Higgerty was going to be appointed as assistant to Rory Higgins? Um, I suppose, you know, Paul back in Mad King. Um, I know, he spent most of his life around football and watching games and watching players and all that. So yeah, listen, it's it's a great move for Paul back into Derry City and he was there before and, and brought success before. Um Stephen Kenny on his number two previously, you know, so it's it's um, a good a good signing I think for for Rory Higgins and the guys to your back from staff, good committed player, a coach, um, knows the game and the league very very well, so he's had loads of experience to it, you know. You go through the squad that Jerry have and like it's, it's top drawer squad, like you know, well, I went and watched the match um, against Lido Rovers and I mean they put out two squads and and one was as strong as the other, you know, they put out two 11s and. You know, they've got two players for every position uh, around the field and they've got real quality and depth. So I do agree. Um, the two lads from Dundalk will, will definitely add to their firepower. Uh, I think probably over the last couple of years, the downside has been, you know, injuries to Patrick McLenny and Michael Duffy. And if can keep those two players fit and injury free for a season, I think they'll get the best out of them. Um, if you look last year, um, Shamrock Rovers were in 72 points and, and Derry City 65 and St Pat's 62. I see the, those three teams to be up there fighting for those top three positions. I don't see that changing too, too much. Um, and you know, all, I mean, Derry have obviously seven points of a difference. That's well turned. Turn, you can turn that around. There's a lot of draws at home last year. You've got to turn them into victories. Can they go and do it? Um, I think they possibly can go and do it this year. Um, um, and uh, you know, they definitely need to, to win a league or win an FBI Cup again, or, or really could be under a bit of pressure for sure. Um, but the budget's massive up there. The quality of players are really good. So the only thing missing now is the league title. Um, and that's going to be their goal for the season. Um, but Shamrock Rovers, we know about it. Real good players as well. And to their squad, Aaron McEnough has um, signed him, obviously, a dairy lad. So he signed him, really good player. And um, scored a lot of goals and he was there previously. Johnny Kenny's signed on loan, loan as well. He's coming in later on. He's still over in Celtic, I think, you know. So they've signed real good quality again. So they're going to be a team to beat for sure. Um, St. Pat's have signed a lot of players with a lot of quality. They have the success of one in the FBI Cup last year. Um, John Daly has come in and has done a brilliant job when he came in um, halfway through the season. So um, they're, they've been back training since mid December and they're back a long, long time. Signed a lot of players, lost players as well, Dingman, but they're. They're going to look to have a big impression on that, but their side's set and one in the league as well. So it's going to be interesting between the, those three teams for me to go and win it. Um, if it was the call now, I wouldn't be 100% sure. You'd think Shamrock over is Derry, but um, it's just you just never know what's going to happen. But the, Derry this year will be pushing hard for a league title. Sorry, Dick, just to go back on one of your last points there, you said you're one of the pre season games, and you know they had they were able to put out two teams and you know pretty much as, as strong as the next. Do you think that's one of the maybe reasons last year why things didn't materialise for them? Yeah, they had a couple of injuries not there, but they've got when, they, when you have so many in a squad and with such quality they have, do you know what your best team is? Does Rui know what his best team is? Yeah, listen, that's that's interesting, you know, because you have the players that play and they have players they can utilise in different positions, like fullbacks and midfielders and, and that. And you know, I, I just think, you know, you lose the quality of, of Michael Duffy for you know and, and Patrick McLenny, you know they're real quality players that cause real problems. You know, mm-hmm. um, they took those kind of quality. Um, out of their team now, Daniel Kelly will make a big difference. Hoban will make a big difference yeah. for sure. He will be a threat. And what they can do now as well, they can go a wee bit longer. Um, I thought last year when I watched them a few times, I thought they were very very good around the pitch. The only yeah. area that lacked a wee bit of quality was up top, yeah. where they just they didn't have that. Um, front man that can hold it and protect it a wee bit, like you know, 
what was happening a lot of times. A lot of them are just floating around, drifting into the wee areas, finding wee pockets of space in the, in the tens area area. Yeah. But no one was actually a focal point for them um, last year. And I think Hogan will be the main difference because he can stay up there and they can go a bit directer, they can go more direct a lot mm-hmm. quicker as well. And look for flick ons with the pace that they have of runners on either side of them. Um, I, I think that could be the missing ingredient for them, really. You know, so if he, if they can get him scoring goals regularly, um, I, I've seen him now a couple of years, and this year is the first year I've looked at him in preseason. I went, you look as fit as I've seen you in a long, long time. His body shape, um, it, you know, he looks as if he lost a lot of weight during preseason. So that, I think that'll add to him. But as you mentioned earlier, you know, the problem is you, you do have is you've lads come from uh, Dundalk who played in Astor for four or five years, six years, some of them. And then they come into the Astor Turf facility up in the brand new well. And we know, as you say, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. You train there every day and it's just harder in your body. And as you get older, that obviously brings knocks and brings problems, muscle problems. So if you can keep everybody fit and well, I, I could see them going the whole way. Yeah. Do you agree with Keith that this has to be a big year for Derry? If you're a Derry City supporter, um, Declan, and obviously over the last couple of years, they've been building and investing and bringing in... Um, several players is this now the year like you touched on a, an FAA cup or a league title would an FAA cup be good enough or does it have to be the league yeah I suppose the chairman can only answer that question you know but you know I think if they want what to the supporters, way, what do you think the supporters are expecting around the brand well? I think there's extra pressure um, with them this year for sure um, there's a big budget there they have the quality of players and like you know they haven't run in too many players like so they're not missing that much. Like they're very, very close to, to you know, going out more than that. And you know, I suppose Shamrock Rovers been very good um, over the last couple of years, and they just need to knock them off their pearl and, and you know be that driving force. But I, I agree with you. There's pressure on. They need to one. They need to one at least an FAI Cup medal this year for, uh, for sure, or a trophy. Um, but I would say that you know the big concerns for uh, one of the league title, and, and if Rory doesn't win the league title, he could find himself under pressure throughout the whole season. And Declan, from a Sligo Rovers point of view, will they be starting the season tentatively? Because, listen, the pre-season didn't go the, the, the way that they wanted. And there there hasn't been too many rumblings coming out from, from the showgrounds that there's going to be a huge a huge push this year. You obviously have been around the showgrounds. You're in with the under-20s. What's the feeling on Sligo going into the new season? Yeah, listen, I suppose uh, there's a wee bit of anxiety, maybe, I would think, maybe, because they've probably locked... Um, at the squad of players that they have and um, they've lost a lot of players as well um, the budget doesn't seem to be as big as it was previous um, so um, and they're probably utilizing some of the 20 players um, when needed as well so the first you know 13 14 players will be a real quality and after that then they're probably um, going to be using up younger players so they don't have the same quality or experience so um, you know, you look around the league and you see what the other teams that they are fighting with, Draw United, Kevin Doherty signed really well, good, good players. Um, excellent job last year as manager, one of the best managers in the league uh, with the resources he had last year. So he'd be pushing hard, um, stay in the league. You obviously have water for Keith Long, signed really well. Good experienced players there as well. Um, got Seems to have a good budget. We have John Coffey down in Galway. Um, they've signed a lot of players, seem to be backed financially by the Comer brothers and they've put on a lot of money into the club and they've a lot of players with real quality as well. So, you know, there are the four teams that I see out, you know, fighting for that playoff relegation area, you know, and, and you know, of those probably if you're looking around, um, you know, Sligo have good quality, really good quality in the first, you know, say 12, 13 players, but after that then, you know, they lack probably death in their squad and, and that might cause some problems down the line unless John can then get a bit more and get a few more players and the strength up the squad. But, you know, overall, the quality is good, but that's the area that you'd be weakening. in. If they pick up some injuries, the squad isn't as strong as the rest of the, of the teams, and, and that'd be a worrying uh, aspect for me, for, for John and, and the squad. Dickie, would you be worried about Sligo over this year? Do you think that they're potentially, oh, well, you mentioned a relegation battle there, but could they be potentially the candidates to go down? Yeah. No, well, you know, I suppose... I wouldn't say that they could be potential. I think the teams that come up are very strong. Mm-hmm. You know, I really think that more so than any other time in the league. You know, you 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 know, your teams up last year, like your car come up last year, wouldn't be as strong um, as the Galway team that's coming up this year. You know, um, they haven't been financially backed as well as Galway. You know, Waterford, Keith Long seems to have 
Johnny Murray down there, and he signed really well, signed experienced players that know the league well. So, you know, it's you. I suppose it all depends. You know, I mean, the form wasn't great for the last part of the season, so you know, depending on how they start off the new season, they could be under a bit of pressure. You know, and um, can they get? You know, can they outstay that? And, and well, time will only tell. You know, but you know, John will probably need the luck to get a few more players, and he has obviously had a wee bit of experience as well. You know, but you know. Um, I know they are trying to get a striker in as well and get a striker in the quality that they're looking at. Um, they, they definitely, that would be a big help for them for sure. Yeah, see, they got Ed McGinty back in there on loan from Oxford, who you know, was a goalkeeper for the last couple of seasons. But any, any of the other lads that they seem to bring in, you know, a lot of, a lot of you know, youth there, a lot of, a lot of young lads, a uh, lad of Ollie Durham and from Cardiff City, Charlie Wiggett, another lad, a centre half, and from Newcastle. Yeah, look, they're all coming from big clubs, I suppose. But, you know, if you're on that end of the table, as we would know, experience is going to count for a lot. Yeah, of course. I mean, players know the league. Um, you know, I always say that it's, it's an added bonus for sure, you know. Um, so they, they have players. I mean, that's John Mahon um, got injured during preseason and John is Kelly. So he's out of the year. Like, that's a massive loss. You know, your, your captain as well, one of your leaders. And all, yeah. You know, and it's hard to, to replace them, um, even though there's players coming in. So, and again, when you sign players, you just don't know what you're going to get out of them. Like, you know, so it's okay for two or three weeks. Like, but give them, you know, one or two, you don't know how, how they're going to develop. Are they going to be good enough? You know, are they good enough to the standard? Like, now, the same players from, from good clubs that have seemed to have on CV are, are looked very, very strong. So you're hoping that they'll have to grind on and, and, and perform to the levels that, that you need, you know. So, but he's going to need, because the squad is, is, is quite bare, I think, um, he's going to need to make sure that he keeps them fully fit, you know, and, and needs any, you know, long term injuries could have a, a negative impact on the results um, and where they, they end up um, in the league, you know. So, um, but you know, this thing, I suppose, you know, long way to go. Um, it probably will try to get, bring more players in as well, which will help the squad a wee bit, you know. But um, I know that there will be some of our squad involved as well, and, and which is great for them, you know, from, from our side and from their one side, see young lads getting opportunities, you know. So, um, and they are good quality as well. So, you know, that, that's an all that's positive as well from the club's perspective. Yeah, and you spoke about there, you mentioned the, the, the two teams that come up, Galway and Waterford. I suppose it's the first time in a long time, well, that I can remember, that you've got two teams that are coming up that are both full-time, you know. So, like, that's massive. You know, that's obviously creates, you know, the <laughs> the quality. You know, they obviously they're spending that time together. They're well-drilled. You know, uh, you mentioned that the type of players are able to track Waterford signed Potter Gammon there from uh, from the lower leagues in England, who's been around a lot and scored a lot of goals. So him coming in up will be massive for them. Uh, Galway have added a few as well, which is going to make them a lot stronger. So um, yeah, look as as you mentioned, it's going to be it's going to be difficult for Sligo if these young lads can come in and t- hit the ground running. But uh, it's definitely going to be a competitive league for sure. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is probably the first year that I remember Keith, where every single team in the league are actually full time. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, every team's gone full time, and even Toronto this year went yeah. full time as well. It was a full time league, like so. You know, where before you always had two or three clubs that weren't. So you should, the, the professional team should should in, in theory be better than the teams that are not, but that's not always the case. You know, but. And this year they're all full time, so it's going to be very, very competitive. You know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very competitive in the top end of the table for me, with obviously Shamrock Rovers, Derry City, and Sapaz pushing hard. And then, and the bottom end of the table, you're looking at those, probably those four teams: Draw, Galway, Waterford, and, and, and obviously Sligo Rovers. So it's going to, be, you know, either way, you know, it's going to be nothing. Uh, going to be very difficult for for those teams to find out where they're going to be placed at the end of the year. You know, it's going to be a lot of. Of, of positive results and negative results and it's how they react to that as well so it's going up and up and top the whole way um top and bottom so it's going to be very very interesting and obviously you've got the teams in the middle then as well you know so um bows will be in the middle of that as well so um fighting hard dundalk will be pushing hard as well so it's in they've signed new players as well and um to the league so yeah it's shells too yeah. shells in there with, i, I know, was Mark actually going to mention shells mark Coyle's captain but it's a big year for Shelburne, because there's now a real expectation around the club that there hasn't been for a long time, Keith. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, European football has made yep. you know Shells a real popular, uh, a popular team again, and you know lo- the local interest. Obviously, with Mark Coyle being there and being their captain, it just shows you the the, 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 the how, how well he's thought of up there, and you know what Damien Duff thinks of him to make him captain of, you know, one of the biggest clubs in the country. Really, you know, they've got real. 
um, European experience there and, you know, a couple of great nights that they had over the years. And you look, they'll be looking to push into the top three as well. They finished fourth last year. I think they finished, you know, I think it's on 60 points. They were just two, two behind Pats and third. So they'll be looking to push on. They lost Jack Moylan, which was huge for them. Their top goal scorer from last year. Um, but look, you know, a really, a really interesting, a really interesting season for them. Yeah. Okay. Listen, lads, we're going to close it off now. So we are, and we're asking you to put your neck on on, on the block. So we are. <laughs> um, Premier Division winners for twenty twenty four, and the FAA Cup as well. We'll mention that. Keith, we'll go with you first. Are you looking for reasons why, or just you just? Well, who do? You, well, well, give me a reason if you want. Uh, give me. Give me a brief reason. A brief reason. All right, we'll wrap it up. Um, I think I think Rovers. I think Rovers just right. because they know how to win. You know the squad hasn't changed too much. You look at how they won the league last year. Um, you know they didn't have a had, didn't have a standout goal scorer. The whole squad contributed. You know you seen you seen them a taste of them last week uh, in the Presidents Cup. You know mm-hmm. they, you know they were excellent against against. Look, I know it's pre season. I know it's not. You know. It's, it's not the full thing, but you know the, the quality of players they were able to bring on. Some of the clear players that are still missing, Pico Lopez, who was out in Africa a couple of nations. You know Jack Byrne, who hasn't played, didn't play the last four months of last season. Who is you know they're trying to get him back. I think he was he was involved in preseason behind closed doors games. Um, he's picked up a niggle. They're trying to get him back in. He's not too sure. So like that's a massive player to bring back into your squad. So I think uh, just with the quality that Rovers have, that, you know the experience, you know they they know how to win. Look, they'll be firing on all fronts as well, League Cup and Europe. So uh, for me, League, it's going to be Rovers. Right, okay, and the cup. Well, the cup's any, it can anybody. be anybody. The cup anybody. can be anybody. It's difficult to, to to pick one there. You know, you would have said yeah. last year. You know, you wouldn't have thought maybe it was Pats, but yeah, look, they've got you know real quality pedigree. Yeah, so uh, uh, if I go in cup, I'm gonna go draw it. They'll be looking for. Uh, I actually forgot to change your camera on the on the podcast thing we were doing. Declan, Declan so I was looking at your facial expression for, for, for the last few months. I was too busy looking over at the table at Keith, but uh, draw draw it for the cup and 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 Rovers for, for for the league. Listen, Declan, who are you picking for the league? Um, I keep it quite simple. I, I think Shamrock Rovers will probably won it, but they're already coming in behind them, and I think they already might go and won the FA Cup. So. Um, um, obviously between, between them and some parts, that's what I'd be looking at, you know. So, um, I'm not sure with the rod and his choice there, I have to say. I'm not sure. Were you drinking before you came in here? Some, you, but... some insider knowledge, <laughs> some insider knowledge. You don't know who I know down there, Decky. So, uh, uh having yeah, a few yeah, conversations. <laughs> Dave Webster's back there, isn't it? Dave's back there, yeah. yeah. Dave's signed yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain as well. Yeah. Listen, lads, we're going to look forward to um, to what will hopefully be a successful season for the Northwest clubs and and in particular Fun Harps. And uh, hopefully they'll they'll have a better season than last year. And fingers crossed they can make the playoffs. But uh, listen, Keith, thanks for coming in and joining us tonight yeah, and, uh, yeah. to look Enjoyed forward that. to the football. And I'm sure we'll be speaking regular now over the over the coming weeks. And uh, Declan, it's always good to have you on board. Good to see you and good to talk to you. Thanks, many lads. I'll be catching up. And don't forget this coming Saturday night. There will, of course, be live regular updates from Finn Harps against Longford Town uh, down at Bishopgate. Denise O'Flaherty will be on duty. Kickoff time is at 7.30. And uh, you'll not miss a thing here in Highland from the opening game of the First Division for the Harps.